uh, are with certain properties and I know uh, a lot of the homes that are in the in the in the flood zone especially in the south section which seems to be much more than the village section is where uh, you know much more of the homes are seeing 15 20 30 40 percent uh, increases uh, and what their tax liability possibly will be and one of the things that I want to just make sure of uh, is that you know there's not a mistake made you know and the reason why I say that is you know whether the person that reassessed the south neighborhood you know <coughs> did not do it correctly and I just feel that for all my going back and forth with Jason, and I've talked to him now several times, where it's like, well, you know, your property's worth more. And I understand that. And the property all over Aquanic is worth more. But there seems to be this sweet spot, and this is dozens and dozens of homes where if, if your assessed value seems to be in this 500 to 700,000 range, that's where so many properties are seeing drastic decreases in what their property tax will be. And I understand if it's a house that's, let's say, 550,000 and it's going up 150, you know, to 700, I mean, with the new assessment, it's going to be a decrease. And I understand that somebody in the flood zone where their house is 300 and it's going to go up to 500 or whatever, it's a much bigger percentage. So that's, you know, the way I see it, that's why they're getting hit so hard with some of these increases. But I'm seeing some of these numbers where, you know, they're going to have a 40% increase in their taxes and they weren't even lifted and I mean when I started running all these numbers and I actually started driving around town because I had a like there's a there's houses on the boulevard um, uh, beautiful houses with big perfect yards and I'm like according to this they're gonna have their property taxes dropped by over three thousand dollars and I'm like uh, I guess I understand, sort of, but I mean, there's, and this isn't even cherry-picked numbers. Then I started going through all the houses in the Glens, where most of those homes are basically seeing a decrease of 900. The townhomes over here uh, by Lincoln Park Road are seeing a 1,400% drop in taxes. Where I'm going in my neighborhood, and it's like, you know, how much, you know, they're like, I'm going up 2,000. I'm going up 2,800. I'm going up 1,400. And all I'm saying, and what's interesting, you know, Ken Hardacre was supposed to be here because I started running all the homes in the village. They don't have that issue. It's, it's weird. Most of their increases are, you know, 400, 600, 800, you know. And most people don't even realize it because they're not running these numbers. And then you have these reassessment ratios where um, the higher priced homes, the ratio is 1.3. And the lower priced homes are 1.5. But I started running the reassessment ratios and a lot of them are over two, which is an immediate reassess, you know, like you, you know, like if it's over two, you have to immediately address that. So, I mean, like I said, and as I wrote in those emails that I sent you guys, just pick a page, any page. It's, 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 it's crazy. It's crazy. And I just, like I said, if, 
it is what it is. But I just want to make sure there's not a big mistake. And one of the things that one of the um, legal staff said from the 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 uh, reassessment company, they said there's something called a wet dry adjustment. And I was like, well, what does that mean? They're like. If you live in a flood zone and the, pro the land values increase and there's mitigation going on, it's called, it, it, what, they, what they look at and figure into the equation is th they figure what you're going to save, which sounds ridiculous, but this is what he said. They figure what you're going to save in flood insurance premiums, they're going to make up for it in your assessment and be able to raise your property taxes. This is what the legal s staff told me at the reassessment company. I go, that doesn't even sound legal on any level. But that's, that's what I was told. But like I said, my whole point is you know, we don't want, you know, so many people, you know, not in the floodplain getting this huge reduction. And it appears that dozens and dozens of homes are making up for that. And if it was just, you know, the homes that were lifted, you know, maybe I could see it some. You know, my neighbor that lives next to me. They're tax, it, it's a 40% increase. They're flipping out. You know, and I go, I don't know. Just, you know, like I tell everybody, you know, appeal. That's all you can do. I mean, the comps are out there to back it up. You know, and like I said, I keep going back and forth with Jason. He's like, I'm still going through everything. But like, if you just, you don't even have to kill yourself. Spend two, three hours just with your calculator and you'll see exactly what I'm saying. Like, why would a house on Mount Nav with a, a third to a half, you know, third to a half an acre that's in great shape have a reduction of over $2,000 in their taxes. I, I don't, I'm sure their value of their home went up. Yeah, all right. You know, so anyhow, that's, yeah. my, that, that's my spiel. And listen, I gave you guys a little taste of it, but if you ever want me to, you know, give you 1520 <laughs> to look at, you know, I'll give you 15, I'll give you 50. Examples. I think we're you know because it wasn't hard because we're all going to let the experts handle it. So yeah, well, if they're not doing it correctly, that's the big problem that I have. And like I said, now after looking at it for twenty-five hours, I can pick them out like that. You know, and beautiful homes that are seeing massive reductions, and you know, maybe they were overassessed. I don't know. But I would think that house from, you know, from the last reassessment from 2010 would be worth more, you know, much more today, you know, and it's just, uh, it, it's just something that has to, listen, people make mistakes. Companies make mistakes. Like I told Ryan, probably six months to a year from now, we're going to have a big talk <laughs> about mistakes. You know, because, I mean, the thing is, people make mistakes. Companies make mistakes. And I want to make sure, even though, from what I understand, this is going to be a yearly thing. They're going to look at this every year. But like I said, you know, from everybody that I'm talking to, at least the people that understand, that actually saw what their taxes are going to go up, you know, you're, you're, gonna, you're definitely going to have some people, you know, forget about the fact that, you know, we were told it shouldn't, you know, your tax, it shouldn't really make that much of a difference. That's what we were told. That's why I didn't really look at it all that closely because I was still moving into my house and still unpacking boxes. So it wasn't until I, <laughs> I was like, whoa. You know, so it's definitely something to be concerned about. And like I said, I notice it especially in my neighborhood. But these homes on the, you know, on the other side of town that are seeing these reductions, you know, which is great for them, you know. 
but I don't understand. You know, and that's it. It's it's really just, you know, I don't understand. You know, and uh, I mean, like, there's this house that's two houses down from me. I mean, it could probably fit, the house could probably fit in most people's backyard swimming pools. It's 700 square feet. I mean, it's a small galley kitchen. It's a tiny di a living room and a bedroom and a bath. And I mean, their, their land value has doubled. You know, one of the other things I had brought up about, especially the houses in the floodway. You know, you can't compare the houses in the floodway to a house that's sold in the non-floodway area that's never had a flood claim, you know, never had, you know, like, well, this house sold for that. I go, well, that house probably sits six feet higher, you know, and no matter what happens, anybody that goes to buy my house has had six major flood claims. Even though it's elevated, still not anymore. Right, it's elevated. It, still going to have four feet of water in the yard when we get our next flood. Right, well, so I'm going to cut you off. Concern. I'm going to cut you off, Nick. I know. I, thanks for letting me. We're, we're not the experts on this, yeah. so hopefully Jason will work it out. And yeah, if he did I, make I, a mistake, I just make sure you guys are all aware. Because we, we've been getting your emails. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, hopefully I shined a little bit more light on it because my that's just a. Yeah. All right. Any other public comment? Okay. At this. Uh, okay. Next on the agenda is the manager's report, Mr. Brewer. Thank you, Mayor. Briefly, a uh, few follow-up items from the last meeting, and one thing for this evening. Uh, with respect to last meeting, there were questions regarding Greenview Park and the bathrooms. Uh, the bathrooms were opened on April 1st. Typically, they're opened around April 15th, but with the weather getting good, uh, it was good feedback to receive. And we are going to explore some kind of video monitoring uh, to see, you know, what the, the cost. The person that asked me gave me a thumbs up because he, he was there the next day. There you go. <laughs> Um, there was a concern expressed about the intersection of Woodland Place and Elm Road. Uh, it's a T intersection and there is no stop sign at the intersection. The Township Engineer prepared and provided a report uh, which essentially comes to the conclusion that based upon an initial review, it's not believed that the warrants will be met. Uh, that said, if the council would like to direct a formal traffic study done, the council can give that direction. Um, will Root Parkway paving? A question came from the audience about when that will be paved. The paving management program that was uh, created a few years ago called for it to be done in 2024. We're a few years behind based upon trying to manage resources. So uh, a couple of few years is when that is expected to be done. And it's also anticipated to be a replacement of, of basically the same as what is there. And lastly, uh, this evening, as directed, there is a ordinance for the council's consideration for introduction prohibiting overnight parking on Willwood Parkway, based on the concerns and the discussion at the last meeting. So unless there's questions, that concludes my report. Any questions? For the um, yeah, I, I think I'd like a traffic study done on Woodland Place and Elm Road, because there is a, there's a lot of traffic there. And there's a stop sign and a road that is comes up from the apartments back there and people are coming off and we have a lot more usage over there especially with the rail trail and and there's just it's an accident waiting to happen over there whatever the council chooses to direct mayor I have a couple questions um, this is like the second traffic concern that came up and the report always comes back that no we don't have to do anything so we're not worried about moving traffic. We're worried about people parking on grass. I mean, I think this is ridiculous. We have to do an ordinance for people parking on grass, but we don't put stop signs. We're not worried about moving traffic. Something seems, as my grandmother used to say, that's backwards here. Yeah, I mean, this, I mean, is, it really this does. is a T at a very busy road and people are coming right off and people are coming right down and a simple stop sign. I mean, people should know to stop at the T. Yeah. Why do we have to do a study? Why can't but we put a stop don't. sign up? It, so, it needs a stop sign. So stop signs are managed by the um, Uniform Traffic Control Devices. 
uh, the manual, what? the manual on uniform traffic control devices, which establishes warrants for those things that control intersections. So respectfully, Councilman, it's not that it says we don't want to do anything. It says based upon a preliminary review, it doesn't believe the warrants will be met. If the council would like to direct that the foremost traffic study be done, it's an expansion of resources, but that is subject to the council's direction. So if the council says do it, we'll do it, and the report will come back. It's believed to confirm the initial conclusion, but if it doesn't, then obviously if the warrants are met, the recommendation can go in for uh, the stop sign. It also notes the fact that legislatively, the council does exercise the authority to the, amend the ordinance and have a stop sign installed. Ooh, I like that one. It Me would too. be it would be it would be inconsistent with the recommendations of the township's <laughs> municipal engineer, which creates certain other interesting issues. But it is legislative within it just the authority seems of, like he says we of the council. It. And then with respect so, to well, a question is asked and a report was generated and a, and a response provided. Got it. The, the I, I understand you dislike that response. The Willowbrook Parkway median was in response to a complaint and issues that involved police involvement and a request was made for the issue to be addressed. I have two quick things. How expensive are these traffic studies? I guess it depends where it is. And there, there's Probably more expensive than a stop sign. But, Can well, you just say put a stop and, sign and my only other concern... If the council wants to amend the ordinance to do that, the council has the authority to do that. My only other concern is this is not the first intersection that was ever, were placed, mm. that was ever brought up. So right. if we do for this a traffic study, then you're going to have... You know. Well, it's not the traffic study. It's the issue of the traffic issues presented right. on cross streets with respect to speeding are not unique to one street. The traffic issues expressed about the concern associated with this intersection are not unique to this intersection, which is why there is a process to evaluate it and make a determination on whether or not warrants are met. It's it's not a, I like this or I don't like this or I got a call from that resident or this person called me. It's so it's based an on empirical. It's criteria. an empirical review right. undertaken by a professional to provide a recommendation. Who so would this professional be? Yeah. Yeah. So he said no. So he's going to come back again and say probably no. Saying. No, he would. He, he would undertake right the traffic here. study. Is this traffic study? Which right involves it's just this letter. This memo. Just a letter in there. He, he just wrote a memo. It's, it's a traffic right. study that involves traffic counts, track op, traffic observations, a review of, of accident history. Wasn't that also the one, though, in his letter when he talked about there's a lot of construction going on over oh, there in oh, Camp oh, 2 or something? Okay. Like, yeah. That was part of the concern that was raised. But but again, it's it's the question was asked, the professional provided a report and an answer. The council has the authority to direct the study to be undertaken. If the, if the council would like the study to be undertaken, the staff will undertake the study. If the warrants are not met, the council will be told the warrants are not met. If the council wants to put in a stop sign, regardless of the review and the recommendation of the professional, that is legislatively in the, in the power of the council. So, quick question. Let's say we say we want to put a stop sign there. And then two weeks from now, somebody complains about another road that doesn't have a stop sign. And we don't put a stop sign there. Right. Now do we have conflicts because of the law and because we're not doing something with a traffic study? And I, From the staff's right. perspective, the staff will undertake every request in a uniform manner. How the council handles it, whether it's one way different than another way, is the council's prerogative. Bob, does that get us in trouble? I don't think so. I, I mean, that, the, you have the you have the ability legislatively to determine for reasons that you determine that a stop sign is appropriate there. And if well, we want a safe and secure town, correct. Right. So, how much does this traffic study cost? Time. Hundred dollars? Five hundred dollars? Three thousand? Well, it's employees' time. It's, time. it's, it's time. not. Yeah. It's time. So how long? How long does one have to sit there? I uh, believe the counts are usually for two weeks. There's, uh, it's based on traffic count? Yeah, there's counts and then that's all based on traffic count? Uh, traffic not that count. It's a T intersection? Not that traffic it's count, uh, design of intersection, uh, and I'm speaking a little bit beyond my pay grade because I'm not a professional engineer. Um, observation of traffic patterns and maybe some other factors that are in the MUTCD that I'm not aware of because I've, I've never actually undertaken one myself. How much does a stop sign cost? I don't know. It seems to me like it would be better just to say, let's put a stop sign there than spend the money. Yeah, but they just like to get all the information and then we can... It, it, the, the council has that right. If the council directs an ordinance to be prepared to put a stop sign in, the council so can do that. Who wants a study? John? 
Melissa? I want a stop sign. I want a stop sign. So you don't want, want a stop sign. sign. No, we can do a study, but I want a stop sign. <laughs> So I want to stop sign. Stop sign. Stop sign. Stop sign. Stop sign. There's three people that want to stop sign. If you okay. want to say, no, I will prepare. I'll get okay. the study. Let's see what the study says. Right. But at the end of the day, I still want to stop sign. Uh, it's my understanding. I have three. I have direction from the council to prepare an ordinance yeah. for a stop sign to be installed at Will Rue. Uh, excuse me, at Woodland Place in Elm Road. Yeah. It will be prepared for introduction on the 25th. We probably even have an extra one at DPW. Sling that sucker up. <laughs> I think I have one in my garage. No, not from this town. Next, next, next question on this parking ordinance. Then, so do we have to put in this parking ordinance that there's no and um, no overnight parking, especially with commercial vehicles in town county parks? Yeah, I remember that. Or is that on the books already? Just nobody does anything about it. Because I've been barking about this for six plus months. They've been parking there for a year and a half. Where, where, and they're where still you, there. Where are you talking? Well, let's put it this way, all right? I can tell you where I'm talking, but but we got 30 plus cops in town with all the people in town, and they don't know what's going on. Give me a break. Wait, I missed it. I'm not yeah, following it. Yeah. Yeah. There's commercial vehicles parked in town county parkland, parking lots, for a long time now. Town okay. county. And they're still there as of. Mm, three hours ago. That is true. So do they park there? They park there overnight. They park there all the time. Town trucks or no, just no. commercial trucks? Commercial. No, commercial. At certain park points in time when I drive by. So then that shouldn't. There's residents that shouldn't be. Oh, that are commercial I know vehicles what you're about. parked in town yes. county parks. Where is it? Okay. That's all I'm saying. Are they there overnight? What? I don't know, but when I go by, yes. at certain Absolutely. times they're there. So can we not pay it? So it, in, res not. In, in response to the councilman's concern, uh, the message was relayed when he notified me of his concern to the police department. And I also asked the councilman if he would be willing to call the police if there were an issue he would specifically have addressed. No, I, I've noticed that. I don't remember well, that. I, I remember running. saying, was it one of the contractor's trucks? And it's no, it's not a, it's not a contractor that's working for the town's <laughs> truck. Correct. And there was also the comment made that if there's a specific concern, you're always welcome to the police department. Problems. Yeah. Okay. Oh. I guess I got to do it. Oh. But then there's two locations, though. Then. Yeah, they shouldn't be doing that. Okay, I'm Are done. Do we have that on the books? <coughs> oh, I understand. So we have that on the books? I, I related to the police department. So I, okay. so I understand yeah, we'll what, you just, what you uh, just said is if I'm not sure John or anybody else here sees uh, that, we should report it. Okay. Right. If, if there's any concern over any activity that is perceived to be inconsistent with the law, and it's an issue in municipal in the, in the township of Aquanic. Anybody is welcome, whether they're on the governing body or otherwise, to call the police department. Right. So, so then there is something on the books that says no commercial vehicles on property. I have not researched. It. Okay. I relayed the concern to the police department. They thought that there was something enforceable. I don't know if they did or not. Because I have noticed, I think something different than John running around certain lakes, and I noticed it three times, and I didn't pay much attention, but. Now I realize that it's there all the time and overnight. But I just presumed that as the police drive past, they would ticket or, or whatever. I just presume that. So that's not correct. We would have to call it in. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know. I'd have to follow with the chief. Yeah. I and I'm not saying ticketing. I'm saying, you know, maybe they can put a, hey, this is not your property. <laughs> Here, here, I, wonder, I wonder if Bob, does there have to be a sign saying that or no? There certainly has to be an ordinance to enforce it. Well, yeah, I, I, I will know. I, I, I can look at it too. Court. I, I will follow with the chief and yeah, ensure that the the concerns of the council are reiterated when it comes to enforcement. And so that would be like a no overnight them. parking at any of our parks. Correct. Ordinance, kind Correct. Of. And I'm not sure that's in there. Okay. We'll look. We'll have to look. Thank you. All right, any other comments on the manager's report? No. I think we had enough. Okay. <laughs> uh, let me go back to this. Uh, there are no public hearings scheduled for this evening. Next on the agenda is introductions for ordinances. Ms. Marsh. <clears throat> For the council's consideration this evening, we have ordinance number 202306, an ordinance amending chapter 340 of the revised general ordinances of the township of Aquanic and prohibiting overnight parking on the Will Rue Will Parkway grass median. Mr. Brewer, any comments? 
Uh, as a result of concerns that were brought to uh, my office from a resident and reviewed with the police department and the municipal engineer recommendation was made to prohibit parking on the uh, median of Wilru Parkway. There was discussion held at the last council meeting. Residents participated in the discussion and expressed concerns over a strict prohibition based upon landscapers, holidays, other unusual events. So based upon the direction of council, an ordinance was prepared prohibiting parking overnight. Any comments from council? Yeah. Is there a motion to introduce this ordinance on the first reading? I'll make a motion to introduce ordinance number 2023-06. Is there a second? I'll second. Roll call. Mr. Dreesey? No. Mrs. Florence Lynch? Yes. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mrs. Russell? Yes. Mayor Cole? Yes. Motion next carries. On, next on the agenda is resolutions. Ms. Marsh? Beginning with resolution R202398, resolution of the Township Council acting as the Board of Health of the Township of Aquanic authorizing an interlocal agreement between the Township of Aquanic and the Town of Booton Board of Health for Public Health Services. 2023-99, authorizing the discretionary award of a contract for maintenance and repair of Township of Aquanic Fire Truck, Fire Truck Tower 2 to Fire Lane Equipment of New Holland, Pennsylvania in the amount of $25,415.45. 2023-100, confirming the designated memberships in the Pequannock Township Fire Department. 2023-101, supporting the establishment of a Veterans Affairs Center in Northwest New Jersey. 2023-102, approving payment of the itemized claims as set forth on the April 5th, 2023 bill list. And R2023-103, approving the designated special event permit application for the Holy Spirit School Annual Carnival. Thank you. Are there any comments on the resolutions from council? I have a question. Yep. R2023-99 about the fire truck. So I see a lot of line items in here, but I'm presuming, are we taking the truck, or somebody from town taking the truck to New Holland, PA? Yes. yes, sir. Okay. So then we don't have to worry about travel, billing, and all the other stuff that's in here. It's a, it's a cost-saving measure, yes. Got it. Thank you. Any other comments? Um, R2023-98, I know we had discussed this before, but I just want to quadruple check that we're not overloading our health department. The additional staff uh, will be hired from a part-time perspective for the inspections, which is the lion's share of it. Okay, so we um, are going to hire another We're going to augment existing okay. staff with know, more staff. I don't know, but I heard that. Is that new, or for, do we know that? No, we knew that. Sorry. Um, we have a part-time... It was a half-time. Register, yeah, we have a part-time registered environmental specialist that we're not bringing on full-time. We're just in, right. increasing the hours okay so we're not overburdening those who are already correct working. and we're going to continue to evaluate there have been expansions and contractions of the health region in the past and and you do what you need to do based on what you think is going to happen right and then if it's right. not and what you think then it is, COVID hits and then it'll right you, you, you adjust um, we had we had one and a half nurses prior to COVID we had another one of the half the half part-time nurses was brought on full-time so we have half a nurse that we okay. didn't have before. So there's been some half a nurse. Some gotcha. So we're still we're <laughs> flexible and okay. Yeah, that's good. I just wanted to double check. Thank yes. you. All right. Any other comments? Yeah. Yes, on 99 yes. again. <laughs> um, I guess this is required by someone until we get our new truck. It was in a report or something. Uh, Correct. There was a review of outstanding issues with Tower 2. Uh, there's about $6,000 worth of repairs that are uh, regular in maintenance in nature that is being handled how repairs are typically handled through the Chief's account that is appropriated annually by the Council. This is a unique repair that's associated with the uh, movement of the ladder. Mm -hmm. Um, work piece. Correct. These are expensive. It's toys. essential. And the, um, the the quotes were given to the fire chief who conducted a review. They were supplied to me. I sent them off to the independent consultant that I seek advice from on fire matters. And uh, he confirmed that this was a required repair to have the truck operational as well as to sell a viable fire truck at the time. It is time to either sell this or trade it in when the new truck is purchased. Okay. I didn't read this fully, but how long is the truck going to be down? A couple of few weeks. Well, six months. There's other six months before they even get the parts. Yeah, we, we have to order the parts. Well, I'm just um, worried about our town not having a truck. The, Are we going to have the new truck in no. before this is no. done? No, no. <laughs> no new, new truck will be summer of 26. Yeah, a couple um, of years. The. 
one one which is the quint mm -hmm. uptown is currently out of service that will be back and arrangements have been made as they typically are with lincoln park for coverage for an aerial piece okay. all right is there a motion to adopt these resolutions yeah, I'll make a motion to adopt resolution R-2023-98 through R-2023-102. It's, I'm um, sorry. Uh, 103? Yes. Brian? 103. And there's a 103. It's just not written here. Oh, that, 103. That's, that's Holy Spirit Carnival. Oh, See? definitely 103. <laughs> <laughs> that's where I get my fried Oreos. Is, is there a second? I'll second. John. All right. Roll call. Mr. Dreesey? Yes. Mrs. Florence Lynch? No, yes. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mrs. Russell? Yes. <laughs> Yes. Mayor Cole. Yes. All right, Bill, so you're passed. Uh, there are no Almost. items listed for discussion. <laughs> Go Zeppelis. <laughs> uh, no items for discussion. Are there any, uh, and there are no reports or notices. Uh, next on the agenda is council reports and announcements. Councilman Dreesey. Thank you, Mayor. The store commission did have their meeting. Um, I was there for the for, for the first part of it. They were just going over um, some of the regular information there. Um, nothing too earth shattering. Um, but since then, the kiosk with the Eagle Scout is going up. So um, it started. I don't think it's finished yet, but um, they're putting it just to the left of the train station as you're looking for it. They, I think they're pretty they're, well. On their way there. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So I saw it's, some it's, pictures. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's nice. Um, congratulations to Hearts Holy Spirit on their carnival. It's always a fun time of year. I don't have little kids anymore, so let's just go, hope it doesn't rain. It's a fun time of year. <laughs> I mean, you don't go. <laughs> And um, congratulations to Timmy. It's not in here. I've, I've known him a long time. His older brother is was in the same grade as. Um, my younger son so I've, I've known him a long time he's a he's a great kid it's going to be a good asset to the town so congratulations Timmy welcome Timmy Wells yeah thank you John uh, Councilwoman Florence Lynch yeah just a couple of things um, our flood meeting uh, I think I told you at one of the earlier meetings it went we went to quarterly meetings so their second meeting of the year will be Thursday, April 13th. That's this week at 7 p.m. Um, our Senior Citizen Advisory Committee, they're going to be meeting Wednesday, April 19th at 10 a.m. I think I mentioned at the last meeting that um, one of the things they want to do is just try to get information out easier to the residents and the seniors. Uh, not everybody uses um, a computer, so um, there's a couple of things they're looking at. Easier, they're working on easier ways to navigate the website. Um, I did go on there today and realized the information is there, but it's hard to find. So there might be some recommendations there on how to get there. I actually had to go into the search bar and just type in the word senior and then look up all the things that come up, but there's no like links or way to get there. So they're working on that. Um, I hate to ask Channel 77, are you ever going to get that back? Seniors are always asking. I know there's only... The, the township ordered the piece of equipment that was believed to be necessary when the IT provider and co our cable vision mm -hmm. got engaged uh, because it was perceived to be an issue with our equipment. Turns out there are additional issues with cable vision, which we're trying to get addressed and unfortunately so it's not just sitting it's on outside of our control mm -hmm. it's, so the, that which we controlled we addressed now we're trying to coordinate with cable vision to get them to fix whatever is at work mm -hmm. so somebody is working on that it's, we're kind of just in waiting mode we're, okay we're, we're reaching out to cable vision okay not dissimilar to the experience that many residents have mm -hmm. okay um, and our Economic Development Committee, they meet, uh, their next meeting is Wednesday, April 26th at 7 p.m. And um, let's see what else. Oh, and I know you're working on this, Adam. The, uh, they're looking for a way, a better way to set up a procedure for new businesses coming into town. So I guess you're working on that. Okay. Um, notifying people. 
and you're looking into let's see what else oh and I just want to let everybody know um, the, the Pequonic Valley Rotary Club for you know which is a, a really good club they do a lot they're going to be hosting a, a, a senior luncheon to honor the seniors in town it's going to be held at the senior house there will be a sign up it's May 2nd from 12 to 3 and uh, any resident in Pequonic, any senior can sign up for it, but there will be a cutoff at, a, at about 75 people. So um, you can look for that on Facebook or there's a sign up sheet at the senior house. Uh, what else? What do you have to be to be a senior? I opened up a senior checking account. Does that make me You're good. Oh, boy. You're in. <laughs> you know, I qualify now, Dave. You know, that question came up because there are a couple of places when you look even on, like, the website, sometimes, you know, they consider a senior 55 in some areas, 60 in other areas. So you definitely uh, qualify then, Nick. You know. <laughs> So, I always think 65. Yeah, but I'm just saying, that I've seen 55, 60, and 65. Yeah. But ARP so, says. Does the, does the town use one particular number as a senior? I, I'm not aware of any municipal yeah. definition. Yeah. Okay. I, I would perceive he or she who's giving the free lunch gets to make the decision right. on what you <laughs> If somebody feels like you're a senior and they want to go and you got an AAR, AARP card, you're good. <laughs> Um, let me see. Anything else? Um, the only other thing that came up, which I did mention to Adam, um, you're the liaison, John, on the shade tree. I guess uh, some letters went out to residents oh. from the tr shade mm -hmm. tree commission, and I actually got three phone calls. I did too. Um, because some people thought the letter was great, and they're like, oh, great, the town's going to, I guess there's certain streets in town that, that were identified, yeah, there's were identified because of this grant of money. Grant. Yep. Right, that was part of the grant. But then I I got a call from two people that didn't want trees at all on their property. What um, so, the case then if they don't have to. You have every right to opt in. Yeah. Oh, you do because they, Absolutely. they give a, they give three things and one is I want to be there and tell you where to place it. I don't right. care where you place mm -hmm. it, but none of it said I don't want a tree. Right. I, I became aware of the letter this afternoon. Oh. Councilwoman Florence Lynch shared with me that people had gotten the letter. Since she shared that with me, I learned that yes, they had gone out. Um, <laughs> I did not get an opportunity to review them or a copy, but I did confirm that it is not required anybody who okay. says I'd rather opt out. They, okay. have, they have every right to opt out even though it is quote unquote municipal property. Gotcha. No one okay. will be compelled to have a tree, but for those individuals that want a tree, I guess exercising one of those options would be best. Okay. I, that's what I said. I said just write in the letter, I don't want one and send it back and see mm -hmm. what happens. Correct. But or, or like, they, the there's email, no checkbox for this. Yeah, the email address for Obviously staff within public me. works <laughs> is on the letter as well. They can just send an email mm -hmm. to, to the woman who's identified and say, Take your my tree address tree is I, I, no, no tree for me. Okay, fine. Okay. I, that's what I thought. Okay. Great. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Melissa. Councilman Hurd. Thank you, Mayor. All right. Bye. Thanks for everything. Yep. See you later. Good night. Let's see. Um, oh, Open Space Committee. One thing was brought up about the liaison for the uh, historic, the uh, Martinbury House and the Township Museum, which is the uh, train station, both plan to be open uh, to the public on Saturday afternoon, May 6th, as part of the Pathways of History, Morris County. Mm -hmm. That's something that they're doing every year, but just to make sure everybody knows about it, it's on May 6th, and both the Martinbury House and the train station are going to be open. What else? I have a bunch of little stuff. The... <coughs> Rail Trail is doing great. Um, yes, the Eagle Scout project. Uh, actually, I've got five projects that's happened in the last 12 months just in town. So we have the one, the gazebo at Panther Park, um, which they finished that last weekend. They're just waiting for putting benches inside. That was done by Dominic Joe. I knew it was going to mess his name up. Giles, Gileski, I think. Sorry, Dom. Uh, number two is a kiosk at the train station. Uh, that just needs to be stained. That was Jacob Golbeck. Uh, number three was the Welcome to Pequonic sign, which is now moved to Route 23 in Alexander by the castle. That was Ryan Seeley. That started on the other side of town first. I kind of moved over there. That was the same guy. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah, it was moved Basically from like moved one the place same to day. Yeah. <laughs> and that was some great work by Adam on that. Mm -hmm. That's a whole thing. No, 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 no. That's the Public Works Department, please. Yeah, but you I had got... nothing to do with that. <laughs> there was a little bit of a snafu, and, and the team worked well, and Everybody the Public Works well Department together. did a tremendous job in and now it bringing it to fruition. Over there. <laughs> Helping to bring it to fruition with Mr. Seeley, who also did an excellent job. Yeah, but that's not all. That was three. Number four was the fishing dock over at Woodland Lake. That is Adam Stanbeck. And then number five was, this is what they're doing this weekend, landscaping at PV School, and that's Nathaniel Criffield. I think that's how I say it. Criffield. So that's five things that Troop 144 is doing for Eagle Scout projects that have been done and are done. So that's a lot of, a lot of stuff going awesome. on. Awesome. Yeah, Great. Carol. Quick question. I, I would love to be able to honor these guys. Do you remember the last Eagle Scout that we did a proclamation for? You're kidding, right? Yeah. Well, could you look that up? Because I was trying to remember. I can absolutely Melissa, look it up. It's been a while. Yeah, no, it's been a while since we've done it, but I can't remember the last one that we did. Yeah, I was I trying can to look think. It up. If you could look it up and, and just email. There's a few more coming up, too. Yeah. Yeah, so maybe if we could just get them all together and just have them come to that Some council. Summer in college. No, so we usually, summer in college. So we we always give them the option of coming. To yeah, the we council usually meeting. go to the ceremony, we ceremony, ceremony but and read it. there was a couple that we missed because of COVID. And they're in college. And they're in college now, yeah. Summer so summer. We'll figure something out, but anyway, nice. I just want to give them their uh, two cents. I think it's great. EMS, I left the printout for the amount of calls in my printer. Sorry about that. So I can't remember how many calls there are, but uh, I did notice that Long Valley is actually having the same issue as we are. So it's the same kind of setup where they have a, uh, a first aid squad that donate their time. And they have an assisted living facility within town as well. And because of Dynamics, uh, it's run by the same company as ours, uh, there are some issues there where um, a lot of calls are being fielded through First Aid Squad. And that's we're having that same issue, but it's not about the calls, it's about when the calls are for like transportation or something that's not, you know, I wanna say life-threatening and in that, I don't even know the word for it, genre, or, you know, we're asking our guys to get up in the middle of the night to show up for nothing, which we got to figure this out. You know, it's been happening a while. I know Mayor Matt Moriello is having that same problem down in Long Valley. They're trying to do something about it, so for what it's worth. We're not the only ones, good or bad. And then last thing, the Quantic Township High School Music Car Wash. Are they going to sing while they wash your car? Saturday, May 13th, 9 a.m. to 12.30 at the high school. And if you buy the tickets from me, it's 5 bucks. But if you show up, they're going to charge you 10 bucks. Just so you know. So, <laughs> a great way to get your cars washed. And support the Pequannock Township Music Department. That's all I have, Mayor. Thank you. Councilwoman Russell. Okay. So that same date, the May 13th, is also Little League Parade. No. no, April 13th. Oh, April, Little League, sorry, April. That Little League Parade May. is this yes. Sunday. The Little League Saturday opening starts. day is this Saturday on the 15th. <laughs> <laughs> Little bit of um, also, that, also that night, sure. I don't, what time? What, it's, 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 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock. Doors um, open at Also seven. that night, Rotary <laughs> is sponsoring a comedy night at the uh, Lincoln Park American Legion. It's only $50. Uh, you bring your own food. There's still tickets left. It's a fun night. It's going to be like four or five comedians. There's also going to be up there? a tricky try. I'm going to be there. You want to go? I'm oh, I thought you were going to be a comedian. I may. I'm not drinking still, so... <laughs> There are some tickets left. So, still, there, so. Yes, there are. There are definitely still tickets left. Um, the following week, the twenty second, is the Mayor River cleanup. Um, opening day of PV Park is uh, Saturday, May twenty seventh. There's a beach party on the seventeenth. That is, a mission is free for members and non-members for the day, and that's the seventeenth from twelve to three. Of May or of June, June. the beach party. Movie night will be the Goonies, June twenty eighth. Gates open at eight. Showtime is eight forty five. Okay. Food truck festival Saturday, July eighth, eleven to five. Rain or shine. I wonder if the is I wonder if the lobster main lobster is going to be there. Everybody loves that. Yeah, they do. Did you have it today? I didn't. It's good. I, no, I didn't. Oh, you didn't have turkey it. sandwich. I gotta oh. get the mozzarella. Got more. Yeah, the mozzarella is good. So, um, 
Food Truck Festival is Saturday, July 8th, 11 8. None, none of my um, committees met this time. And um, Rail Trail, Rail Trail's looking good. I'm a little concerned about the crosswords, roads where the Rail Trail goes on the busier streets. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm hearing stories of kids just zooming right past there. So. Um, Hopefully. I think they, they, they put up a whole bunch of bright yellow signs there, didn't they? Good. And they're going to be blinking. Yeah. But a little yeah. over a week right. ago, there were concerns shared issue. with me. I reached out to the county engineer, and the challenge right now is technically the trail isn't done, so it's right. not technically open. Right. So everything's not installed that is intended to be installed. So he was trying to work with the contractor to see if additional things could be installed to create safety, especially on Alexander and Jackson. Yeah. 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 Try to put blinking lights on Alexander. Alexander. They need them. Yeah. I, it's not on the plans. I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't know. No. Yeah, I guess that's going to be after something after they give it to us. We have to fight that, I guess, if it's not on the plan, right? The biggest problem is that now it's a paved way, and it's beautiful, and you're just kind of cruising or running or walking, right. and well, kid, kids are riding that, especially by Jackson, they're not, and they're they're, they're coming right Jackson. over, Jackson and people coming right up that hill, they they can't see, they don't know. It's blind. So, so blind, yeah. yeah. I mean, if it's not open, maybe they should make the contractor put a permanent fence across it because yeah, what the they're doing is not working. Yeah, it might have to there. put a fence. The movable fence. Or those plastic uh, some cones or jersey something. barriers are full of water or something. Yeah, well, they've said something Something was put up recently, right? I haven't seen it. Well, there, there was, was action taken, but I don't, yeah. I don't think it's... The thing in the center, yeah. It's, yeah. I, I don't think it's as far as is being discussed up here. Turnpike is they just put a bunch of those big orange. Yeah, which is good. Just good because I think the people help. walking know well, enough to stop, but it's the kids on the bicycles. So yeah. maybe if you have the barrels, they do as that. long as there's not a board up. <laughs> How many of those rolling trailer <laughs> signs do we have? Yeah. We only have one of those. Or two. <laughs> Anything. <laughs> the kids whiz around them. Yeah, that's true. I think the police have one. But John, do you remember if there was supposed to be a gate across those? There's, I don't think there's a gate across the trail. On some areas, like down in Peconic, there's and by Waffle Woodland, there's gates across the like the water access road. Oh yeah, 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 right. But there's I don't think there's any gates across the trail. Yeah, because that if we have gates, I mean I don't like them, but at least you can run and walk around them, and it's going to force don't the kids to yeah. slow down. I don't want to follow. Yes, yeah, so and then speak, um, nothing. Just congratulations to Timmy and thank you for servicing. Um, the only other thing I wanted to say really quick about that rail trail. Um, I know we've talked about it before, and there's nothing we can do about it right now. But the, you know, with the summer right around the corner, are we going to be able to address that guardrail? No. Before no. that, no. So not until, not until, until it's full. Yeah. Not until it's uh, That's what finished. I thought. Summer of 2024 will be the earliest yeah. it's expected so in the meantime, that anything will just be have to considered, which all over creates the additional lead time because then we'll start the bill. Okay. Carpool. All right. Um, yes, congratulations to Timmy Wells being coming the junior firefighter at Company 1. Company 2 meeting is this Thursday. Company 1 meeting was Good Friday, and they moved it to this Friday. So I have back-to-back -back meetings for the fire department. Little League Parade uh, is April 15th. Unfortunately, I won't be able to go to the Quantic Rotary thing. Ben and Joe turns 30 this weekend, so I think uh, we're going to do a dinner with Ben on Saturday and right. lunch with Joe on Sunday because Joe's tired of having a party with Ben. <laughs> <laughs> At 30 years old, they're yeah. finally celebrating. Yeah. Are you going to wear different clothes yeah. now, Joe? Uh, <laughs> April 15th is the Little League opening day. I actually threw a couple baseballs last night to make All sure right. I was able to. There you go. <laughs> and uh, Saturday, April 27th is the Riverwalk cleanup. So anybody that wants to go, please uh, show up. I thought that was the mayor's. You're just doing everything. Yeah, well, I'm just going at the Riverwalk cleanup. <laughs> what time does the parade start? 8.15, you should be there. 7.45. Oh, that's such a good thing. 8.15, 8 o'clock. You know, the kids were told to be there at 8 o'clock. I just saw an email that I looked at that says that the parade's going to start at 8.25. Okay. So. 
Mm-hmm. There's also a rodeo on that deck. But I would think that if everyone is done or everyone is ready, they may start early. So you may want. Yeah, to I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to make it because I have a christening, but it's not until eleven thirty, so I guess I could make it. That's why I asked the time. You can make it. All right. Next on the agenda, it's public comment. If anyone wishes to address the council, please wait to be recognized. Come to the microphone and provide your name and address for the record. That's you, Nick. Or Sharon. Anything? Uh, Sharon. <laughs> Hi, Sharon. I can't see her back there. All right. Good. Next on the agenda is minutes for approval. February 28th, 2023. May 4- March 14th, 2023. March 28th, 2023. All regular meetings. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? I'll make that motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, next on the agenda is closed ses- session discussion. Is there a motion to approve resolution 2023-104 authorizing the township to meet in executive session to discuss contract negotiation shared services with Lincoln Park? We'll make a motion. Is there a second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? At this time, the public portion nice of the meeting again. is recessed for closed session. Good to see you, Sharon. See you soon.